Hello everyone, we're back with Chris today. Um, it's Saturday afternoon. We've um, just seen the U's suffer a disappointing home defeat to Whitehawk, 1-0. Uh, so we'll cover that and probably have a quick reference back to the Wingate and Finchley game on Tuesday as well, where the U's played pretty well. Um, yeah, big difference between the two games, Chris. What's, what's your take on it as far as that difference? Team set up pretty similarly, but different uh, performances. I, I think to be honest, the last week, so from Bognor last Saturday, I know we, we touched on it after the game, immediately after the game and then Wingate, and today I think there's been a pretty consistent theme about missing a lot of, a lot of goal scoring opportunities. Um, yeah, we ultimately like we, that's the reason that we're not like our our, our hopes of getting in the playoffs are pretty much extinguished today. Mm. Um, so, with that in mind, you sort of reflect on on why why we fell short, and um, you know, we just missed too many opportunities. Because like, you, you look at our defensive record, it's actually up there with some of mm. the best in the division. Um, we don't give much away. Like even today, Charlie Granger, I don't think, had a save to make. Um, you know, we just we just don't take our chances. We, mm. That's like against Wingate on Tuesday. On the face of it, two 0 down, down to ten men, two two. You'd sort of think that was a decent point, but. We could have scored seven. Yeah, I've, I've, you know, we've watched the game back and we've analysed it and gone through it with the players. And before they scored, their Weldy first goal on the angle, which he mm. slapped into the top corner, real high quality finish. Before he scored that, we've had three sitters. So, and even after uh, we went a goal down against Wingate. We miss more chances. Then Faggy pops up with, with his goal. Um, <clears throat> and after half time, we obviously knock on the door. Miss more chances. Like the thing is, there's such high quality chances as mm. well. So, in terms of getting from our goal to the opposition's goal, we're we're very good, and we get there consistently against the best teams in the division. You know, we haven't come away from many games where you think we haven't. We haven't created an awful lot there, especially in the sort of last couple of months, obviously the longer we've been working together. I, th I think we're fairly consistent. We create an awful lot of chances, but Jesus Christ, we miss a lot. Yeah, because it's into that having Freddie and John in those long ranging wing back positions, yeah. we've created a, a lot of good crosses into the box. Yeah. And we had and on Tuesday we had one on ones with the keeper, didn't yeah. we? And the two late crosses mm. at Wingate particularly. Yeah. Um it is interesting. That pattern of play is definitely working for us, mm. apart from the ball going in the Just net. Put the ball in the net. Like, mm. And as as good as Dav has been, um I mean he's he looks like he's gonna break the the club's uh, goal scoring record, which which is obviously great, but he'll be the first to admit he could have scored 50 goals this year. Yes. Genuinely could have scored 50 <clears> goals. Um, but then equally, our second top goal scorer is Femi Akin one day, mm. who's just won the league with Hornchurch. Yes. It's not it's not good enough. Like the, the attacking players in the side, their job is to pitch in or chip in, sorry, with... 15 plus like mm. it's all it's always been <clears throat> it's always been uh the recipe for any successful team that's challenging in any competition you, you obviously you tend to have your main man but then you need 15 10 7 or 8 from center backs i mean when when i was previously here you obviously had daniel Ajakai, mm. but with that you also had sam adams jack dixon they're sort of getting 10, 15 goals as well. Jordy, when he come in, like scored a few. Dav, when he come back from injury, then uh, chipped him with a few. So the goals were spread a, a lot, a lot more amongst the the attacking options. Centre backs, Craig Stone, Gary Elphick, they mm. they pop up with goals, um, and we just haven't we just haven't done that, um, and that's why we fell short. 
that's the, that's the long and the short of it because yeah. at one end we don't give much away in possession we get the ball from our goal to the opposition's goal with real consistency with real quality even on a cow field at home um, but yet we just miss chance after chance so but, yeah. but you know but like today we've missed we've missed the ball's gone under Dad's foot Leggy's had a shot from six yards out and miskicked mm, it. Scuffed it. And then Geordie's gone through, and to be fair to Geordie, we've just looked at it, he's gone through, and the ball bubbles up. It's ridic- just leapt up, It's didn't ridiculous. It? Yeah. It's just ridiculous. But I think there was one for Tommy as well, where he was just cutting into the edge of the area, yeah, on the, and yeah. the ball lifted a yeah. little, so he shinned it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's very frustrating. Um, because as I said we do create an awful lot of opportunities but like I've just said to the players we've got what we deserved because ultimately we've got to put the ball in the net yeah. like for all of our good play and there's a lot of good play and there's a lot of good football and we control most games of football um, yeah, like Tuesday night against Wingate we were excellent but we just haven't been ruthless enough in the uh, in the opposition's box, unfortunately. Yeah, so yeah, certainly against Wingate, I, I, I did the commentary actually with mm. young Tom, so I was sat in the main stand, so I had a good view. And the the way we played was was undoubtedly excellent. I mm. mean, that their goal, who's going to save that? Like you say, that mm. shot on the on the angle that the, the guy hit into the far corner. But that's what I mean. Good players do that. Yeah. Like when was the last time one of our four players? Mm. And this is a bit of a challenge for them, really. Like got the ball and stuck it in the top corner. Mm. Like when was the last time that we saw an unscripted, unpatterned goal where someone's just shifted out of their feet Absolutely. and hit one? Yeah. Like, that's what I mean. We need to work the ball into the most precise position. And mm. and you know, you look at Whitehawk today; they've smashed it down the pitch and picked up a few second ball and they've come away 1-0. Yeah, then, that, that was a good example. Wasn't it? The guys well, made a, a made a pretty good finish yeah. from the ball dropping out the sky. Yeah, it was a good finish. Yeah. It was a good finish. I mean, uh, I think Chaz will, would agree he should do better with it, but I've got absolutely zero criticism for Charlie because he's, he's won more points for this team this season than any other mm. player. So uh, I've got zero negatives to talk about with that so it is you know he's got more than enough credit in the bank so yeah the only interesting thing about that was it was it was that on that left hand side mm. where Sam Gale had come off yeah, I yeah. guess yeah. so Jack was having to fill in yeah. in that role so maybe having an impact no nah, we just watched it back and it's, it's there's not really a lot that Dicko can do I mean dicko has been playing as a right side centre back in training for a while right. so it's just one of them that obviously we, we knew today that we have to win so if we drew today it wouldn't be good enough so you know we thought rather than we needed Dicko on the pitch who I thought played very very well today I thought he was very good I think he's had it I mean from, again I think he's, the past two or three games mm, he's, he's looked up to full speed he's played very well yeah. he's played very well since he's come back from suspension he's been excellent so um, we needed to keep him on the pitch um, so just meant that it, we shuffled the pack a little bit and then put uh, to bring Will Harley on to give us another attacking threat. So, uh, yeah, frustrating. Yeah, so so as far as the goals are concerned, I mean, you said about the goals being shared round. Mm. A lot of those players haven't been with us for long. Mm. So that's what that's going to be difficult. They haven't played all season mm. for us. So their, 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 their goal numbers are going to be low because of that, yeah. aren't they? Um, I was seeing interesting seeing on the just something on the telly that cropped about conversion rate, mm. um, chances to goals. On that. They were talking about Liverpool, funnily yeah, enough. Yeah. Um, is that something you talk about? Do you talk about where you're finishing from and yeah, how yeah. people finish and that sort of thing? And work yeah, yeah. on the. You said about the chance goals. Those yeah. more oh, interesting yeah, chances. Yeah, no, everything that everything that we do on the training pitch is uh, linked to linked to the game and and the opportunities or the type of positions the players are going to be receiving the ball. Mm. So, yeah, there's no, as I said, that, the, the, what I would say is, is that pitch out there is horrendous mm. and it doesn't help us one bit. 
and it's no coincidence we played like we did at Bognor and Wingate on two decent surfaces. I think our actual home form since I've been here has been bang average and has probably ha like hindered us. I think we've probably picked up more points away from home. I don't know mm. that, but my feeling is, I mean, for us to say that we're looking forward to going to Canvey Island away mm. more than playing at home is an illustration of how difficult that pitch is. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a balancing act because you could argue, well, you know, do you do you go from back to front a little bit quicker and you miss it out, but we've not recruited players that are fit for that. No. It's not the way that we work, it's not the way that ultimately I believe is is the best way to win games or be sustainable um over a long period of time. I don't as I said, I don't think it's the best way to um develop players within the academy. And ultimately, as well, if you if you have one way of playing at home and one way of playing away from home, you end up getting caught half and half in the mm. middle and doing neither. Mm. Mm. But that, and ultimately, again, like even though that is as bad as what it is out there, we've still created enough chances and we've dominated today's game of football yeah. from start to finish, really. So, um, you know, it just leaves me with a feeling of obviously we played Wingate on a bowling green and we're excellent. Just leaves me with a feeling of if we probably had that type of surface to play on consistently, what could we have done? Yes, very. As a fan, it's it's frustrating to see our better performances away from home mm. because, again, and then speaking as someone who works at an inverted commas at the club, it's frustrating yeah. to see seventeen hundred people, fifteen hundred people, two thousand people mm. watching us struggle. Yeah. There, isn't it? It must must pl must be a difficult thing to. To cope with well I'd like you know you you got just got to put two and two together and mm. you get four like yeah. it's common sense like the, the the thing is is training on the pitch and the pitch being crap you know they're not they're not mutually exclusive you know what I mean yeah. like like the pitch can still be decent yes you can still like get it up to a half sensible standard so that's something that we need to address because mm. it's definitely hurts. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm convinced by that. It, it, as a, well, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure when we, when we reflect on um, performances and points, I dare say we probably picked up more away from home, yeah. which, which isn't right because we've got a 12th man here supporting us that deserve, that, that are amazing and that deserve to see uh, a level of performance that we've produced away from home so it is incredibly frustrating yeah like, as I said when Geordie's running through on goal and the ball it's like something pops up out of the ground it has a life of its own right, it's just ridiculous yeah. you just can't you just can't. <laughs> it, it suits the opposition more than us mm. like our home pitch suits every opposition more than us mm. um, so it's something that we've got to we've got to address because mm. As I said, ultimately, we've not been good enough in the opposition's box. We've missed too many chances. We've been too wasteful. Um, but part of that will come down to what we're playing, playing on and dealing with. Yeah. But we still got... I was, I was saying, you, can, you tell the team shape is good. Mm. You can tell you've settled into the group of players that you want largely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of young players... Are come, have come through and taken another step this mm. year, haven't they? Uh, Finley being an example yeah. we've talked about, for example. Yeah. Um, what's your thinking now between now and the end of the season? Obviously, we've got the, the County Cups, the big finish, but you've got three league games, notwithstanding the fact that we're just off the playoffs now. Still want to finish strong? Uh, oh, of course, cool, yeah, yeah. You want to win every game. Um, no, no we're, not, we're not getting in the playoffs. That's... That's not happening. Right. Um, no, I've, I've, I've just said to the lads, we would just be the team that we're going to probably play in the Senior Cup final now. Mm. So all the cup tied players, they will, they will only be playing if one of the non-cup tied players needs a breather. So for example, Dav has had to come off with a potential hamstring yes. injury. So like the priority now is is very much Horsham in mm. the cup final so 
we need to make sure Dav is ready for that. So that then might be an opportunity for a cup tied player to play in the league. But if we can if we can get uh, the team out that we believe is most likely to start the cup final, we'll do that. So yeah. like Dicko and Krutz and Ob and uh, Kean, Chapo, all these guys that are cup tied. I'll be surprised if they play much football, to be honest, between yeah. now and the end of the season. Right, that's a shame for them, isn't it? Because most of them have made big contributions. I can think of Sam Crutwell since he's come in, for example. Yeah, he's been brilliant. Um, Oli has, Im- has definitely improved when he came back. Mm. You could see he'd improved. Yeah. Finley has done so well. Yeah, um, yeah uh, that's, uh, and as it were, Dicko, we've already said, played great since mm. he came back from his suspension. But that's, uh, so that, but that's well, the focus then. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously we've always, like, we never envisaged when I first come in that we would be pushing for the playoffs. Mm. We've always very much been bigger picture, build a competitive side now with a view to really having a go next season. Um, so we're just ahead of schedule really. So that we, we still can't lose sight of, there's going to be some valuable experience there for the cup tied players. Yes. But then equally, I want to make sure that we're as competitive and cohesive as possible when we play Horsham so it'll be a balancing act I mean obviously I'm incredibly frustrated about today I'm incredibly frustrated about the pitch so in terms of saying they're not going to play another minute that's quite an emotional response from me at the yes. minute and, but then in the sort of general sense that as I said the ones that are available for the cup final will be given priority I and mean, you know it's not as I said in, in in situations like this you can often find that um, someone surprises you mm. and you know that potentially they're out of the side at the minute and then they come in and you actually go well maybe if they were playing originally we probably would have been even more competitive yeah well, it would create, creates chances for others yeah, doesn't definitely. it for sure definitely yeah. so um yeah, like JJ Walker's it always springs to mind. He's yeah. he's the one that never let you down, has he? No, I just he's the one that wrangles with me most mm. um, because you know I can't help but feel that obviously we've had quite a bit of turnover in his position, and part of me does worry that we might have lost some ground with him or give him or missed out on some valuable experience that would have meant he's even further along. But then. He is 19, 18, yes. 19, so it's still early days for JJ. But like you know, he's, he'll have a run of games now, and and um, you know he certainly won't let us down. I know that, so I'm looking forward to seeing him, seeing him out there against Enfield and and uh, Potts Bar can be well. yeah. yeah. And we won't have any complaints about the pitch at the Amex, will we? At least we no, need know that. No, 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 no excuses there. <laughs> but saying that there was no excuses at Wingate, and we still managed to miss enough mm. chances to win five games of football so you know that, that's re- it's just the challenge really for the group like mm. we've got we've got to be more ruthless we've got to be we've got to put teams to bed I mean like today while I mean that they can't be happy with that they can't be happy obviously they will be because they've come here and they've won one nil but bigger picture mm. I mean Jesus Christ they can't be happy with that like and in some ways, that makes it more frustrating well, for you, doesn't like, it? Really? <laughs> with what they've got out there as well, like yeah. Charlie Walker and Charlie yeah. Harris, and they've got some good players out there. Mm. Like, some really good players out there. Um, the two centre-halves, Tennant and um, Luca, Hamish Morrison, like, he's a good player. Like, Joey, mm. he's a good player. The goalkeeper, they're, they're good players. And they beat us today, but as I said, mm. I think, Jesus, like that's it's not... just one of those games. Whereas, whereas Tuesday, last Saturday and Tuesday felt like high quality semi pro <sighs> games. Today, not so much. Well, yeah, like, it's funny. As I said, you, you, you win games, you lose games, and but you know, I wouldn't say that <clears throat> I prefer to lose a game playing a certain way. I'd never say that because. Do you know what I mean? I, mm. you know, I, I don't want to be like a football snob or anything like that. There's loads of different ways to win games. I'm really respectful of that. But, but like today, like they haven't really done anything to beat us. So we've, this is where it's really important. The outcome doesn't sway um, 
the sort of the the sort of the analysis of the game because mm. it looks like White Hawk one nil. But ultimately, if we score one of our seven sitters, it's it's uh, game over. Yeah. So yeah, very very frustrating. Yeah. Right. Okay. So nevertheless. Still got three games to go, mm. plus the cup final. Yeah. Um, I guess the players will be in next week. So mm. next week's work, will that be beginning? You'll be, be, as you said about the other games, you'll be beginning to turn your thoughts towards that cup final or focus on the games? Well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll plan for Enfield. Um, but that will be, as I said, very much with the players that we have available for the cup final, as I said, and plus one or two of the cup tied lads that, that um, that may need to fill a gap, but, but again, like Finley Chapman is is in such a good place. He's playing well. He was decent again when he came on today. Look, you know, he had a great shot blocked. So mm. um, he's in a really good space. So it, even though he's unavailable for the cup final, you sort of get a feeling that this could be an opportunity to give him a run of games, maybe sure. give someone a rest. But again, uh, I'm re I'm really conscious of making sure that now. Now it's the playoffs is done. You like we've got to, we've got to give our uh, supporters the best um, the best opportunity to experience a, a winning performance mm. from Hastings United on May the eighth. So yeah, yeah. So they, the, they deserve that. Like, as yeah. I said, that they deserve that. The supporters again today were amazing. Like at one nil down, when to be honest, I, I would have you know I wouldn't have been surprised if they did. Like with the amount of chances we're missing, you think I wouldn't surprise if a few of them got the ump and walked out, to be honest. But that, <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. But not going to do that. No, they? they're amazing. They're amazing. They, they, they um, you know, our challenge as a group moving forwards is to try and get remotely close to their consistency mm. and, and how um, relentless they are. If we can do that, then we will be there or thereabouts. Yeah. So. Yeah, excellent. So the only thing I'll say I'll say it on your behalf because mm. we want we want you to be on the bench at the MX, not in the director's box. Yeah, yeah. Freddie was very harshly done by on Tuesday, um, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so he will miss three games probably. Yeah. So that's the only um, difficult situation you've got with regard to your plan for the County Cup, I guess. Yeah. Because he's been he's been playing very well since you've given him that. Yeah, he's, he's longer running role. He's done all right. He still mm. frustrates the life out of me though, mm. because there's so much more to come from him. There's so much more to come from him. Like the amount of times that, like even the tackle, uh, strongly debatable red card. Mm. Um, player reaction. Yes. Work to treat, um, which is a bit of a lesson for our guys. Because we're very nice and green. You said and we're sometimes a bit naive. Very right? naive, like, mm. you know, helping opposition players up and asking if they're all right after they've just booted us up in the air and rather than getting around the referee, which is unfortunately is all part and parcel of it. Um, but f you know, ultimately, fr uh, Freddie's followed through on a tackle. Um, it was a loose touch. Yes. And if he was probably a little bit more decisive in that moment, he wouldn't have found himself lunging for the ball. Mm. Um, yeah, it, like Fred, Fred's, um, Fred's done all right, but there, there's so much more to come. Like first half today, I thought it was excellent. It's yes. probably the best I've seen him play for a while. And then second half, done nothing. Mm. So it's like what, it's consistency, young players. Young like player. if, if, yeah. he, if he, all the things that he can't do, if he could do them, he wouldn't be here because mm. he's got a very good physical profile. He's got an excellent delivery. Um, he's got a decent. He's got a decent finish. Like, he's technically good. Like there's so much to like about him. Um, so the challenge for us is just to try and develop him and work with him and and uh, try and get him to a point where he doesn't have such glaring weaknesses in his game, which will then lead to consistency and you know, really try and help him turn those strengths into super strengths. And yeah. hopefully that gives him a platform to to progress and fulfil his potential. But um, but one thing I will say is about Fred is he he does what we ask him to do. Like mm. not always the right. Like sometimes he gets a bit muddled and the execution is not quite right. But he follows the plan, and that's a big thing for us. Yeah. Like there was a, there was one or two out there today that come a bit off script and trying to do their own thing a little bit. 
and that that's not for me. That's not for us. Like we've 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 managed to take the team from 14th, I think, to and closer to the bottom to threatening the playoffs to a cup final, and we've done it through being a decent team where players serve the team. Mm. And then the team is a platform for the individual to really sort of show what they can do. Like, and there's a couple of times today, and it's incredibly frustrating. It's happened a couple of times in a couple of games where some of the lads go a bit off script and do their own thing, and that doesn't help us. Yeah. Um, so that's something that will be addressed in the summer, um, and it's something that, to be fair, Leggy's always does his best for the team, always works hard, always gets back. Yeah in to protect the back post, he does a hell of a shift for us. So um, it's just our job to try and get the best out of him and we'll, you know, we'll try our best. Okay, so before we close, the only thing I will add, despite a knackering day on Tuesday, mm. a long old trip that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, especially back... going through the Blackwall Tunnel oh. on the way there as well. That was a good idea, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Arsenal but, at the Emirates, we'll go through know, the Blackwall Tunnel. It felt, it felt like, we, it felt like oh, I've driven to Manchester in Leicester. Yeah, time, I yeah, think. I know, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I know. Well, that aside, you were back here Wednesday evening mm. for the under-19 and B-team recruitment evening. Yeah. So yeah. that looked a really positive thing. Yeah, very Big good. Old turnout, yeah, very it? good. 60-plus players there. Yeah, very good. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of good players coming through the academy. Um, a lot of different types of players as well, which is good. So you, you haven't got mass production of mm. a certain type of player. There's, there's lots of difference in there and um, lots of variety for us to potentially work with further down the line. So now that's, that's credit to the academy and yeah. the coaches. And you know, like we've obviously still got a bit of a pull in terms of local football, being able to attract other players from other clubs as well. So yeah, it's good. I, I think they could probably see the pathway, seeing, mm. um, seeing the amount of young lads we've got, young local lads in the first team. So yeah, no, it's... Um, it was very good. Um, to be fair, really well organised. Ben Cornelius, John Gardner, Shane Maxey, uh, Dobbo, um, Stuart Playford, um, Jack, um, 15s coaches that they you know all sort of pitched in. Glyn White as well. So it was, it was really well organised event. So that was good. Yeah, but there's a, there's a saying in sport, isn't there? I think if you can see it, you can be it. And that's that's, yeah. the, that's the thing here, isn't well, it? Well, that's what we said to the lads when you know, like if you're 15, 16 now. You could be a Ben Ward who plays 15 games for the first team and then gets a move to Burnley. So, yes. and, and the one thing that I think the players at the football club do know that if, you know, if you're good enough, you'll get an opportunity um, and that we're not afraid to, to put the younger players in to have a go, um, mm. as we saw that again today. Like, yes. you know, we're chasing a game, it's an all or nothing game and we've brought on Finn Chapman and Will Harley. And so, Will, yes. yeah, which is credit to them though, because they, they've, you know, the opportunities aren't given, you know, they've, they've earned them. So. They've earned your trust. Yeah, oh, 100%, yeah. like, and, um, you, know, it, you know, it's just a case of where next. I mean, that's the dream. If you can get a, t a group of exclusively local homegrown players, that's, that's the dream of the football mm. club. And I think we're getting closer to that. Um, because one thing you do know with local homegrown players is, it, you know, if you ask them to do X, Y, and Z, they do that, and they do uh, that with their all, and that, yeah. you know, I think the supporters can um, respond to that, and ultimately that's what, you know, if, if we, we've got to get a team out there, and you're more likely to do that with with that type of player. So yeah, no, it's um, it bodes really well for the future. Yeah, excellent. Well, that's a good note to end on, yeah, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. I'll let Better you... than the first note. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's considering where we come from, mm, we're yeah. not in a bad place. Yeah, no. no. Best, Horn best. Church home feels a long time ago, though, after that. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, yeah. Lots, still quite a lot to look forward to. Mm, yeah, loads. loads Fantastic. Yeah. No, thank you, Andy. Thanks for your time again. No, pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.